The very first step in becoming a template creator is of course making a great template. In this video, we'll cover the key aspects of template creation that result in great digital products. For the purposes of our time today, we're going to assume that you're pretty familiar with building in Notion. That's because we want to spend less time explaining how to make a template and more time analyzing qualities of templates that are both popular and useful. When we think about creating templates, we can think of the standard five-step design process. These steps include empathizing with an audience, defining a problem, ideating on solutions, prototyping, and testing. For the purposes of our time today, we'll group the first three into a bucket of problem solving or coming up with an idea for your template. According to the design framework, this process starts by empathizing with your target audience and starting to define a solution. If you're new to building digital products, we've found that the best way to do this is to come up with a system that works well for you personally. This will help you to target a specific audience with unique needs, making your template more valuable and sought after. Plus, it lets you leverage your personal experiences, creating something that feels more authentic and practical. There are so many templates out there and you can think you have to come up with something completely unique. You do have to solve a problem no matter what we're doing for us to add value we need to be solving a problem whether it's for yourself or it's for a client or it's for your fellow students whoever you want to create for but infuse yourself into that for example the first template i ever created before even joining the notion team was based on my experience running a newsroom in college after you consider your audience and their problems start to ideate on solutions that work for them or better yet solutions that have worked for you in my case, we needed a place to track all of our stories from pitch to publication. So I built it for my team in Notion and later developed that into the template you see today. As you start to find your niche, consider the following questions. What unique skills or knowledge do I possess that could be valuable to others? Are there any niche markets or specific professions that lack tailored Notion solutions? Can I combine existing Notion features in a new way to create a unique workflow or system? Or myself, how it worked was like, I just created and give that shelves a boot for me and that I used every day. So that's, I think, a good way to start. Like if you have some pages that you're excited about on your Notion workspace, why not just templatize it and then share it to the world? Because some people might need it too. Before we move on, let's look at a few more examples of successful niche templates, like this time tracker for freelancers and small businesses, focused on small business owners who need a better way to organize their hours in a day. Or this lazy RPG campaign template for Dungeons and Dragons players who want to win but not spend hours researching. Or Figma's Fig Manual for knowledge management at a fast growing company. Or this startup brand workbook for coming up with a brand strategy. Once you have a solidified idea for your template that solves a clear customer problem, step two is to prototype or create the template itself. At the end of the day, all Notion templates are, of course, a thoughtful combination of blocks. If you're watching this course, you're probably already an expert in combining those blocks to build tools. But if you're wondering which building blocks can differentiate your templates, I can say that they tend to be some of the more technically complex items like formulas, automations, charts and forms, buttons, and AI blocks. There's also a lot of value in the aesthetics and educational elements too. So what might a final template product look like? Let's consider four popular types of templates, starting with one pagers like the SWOT analysis. These are simple and user-friendly ways to share workflows in a worksheet style format. These kinds of templates can be immediately valuable to people, even integrated as database templates without high setup costs. Next are sites. These are content-focused templates, such as this interview prep guide, which focus on the content, not the structure of the template. These are most often some sort of in-depth resource on a specific topic. Then we have workflows, which are templates designed for specific tasks or processes, like this database for OKR tracking that helps teams streamline their work. The majority of templates in the marketplace fall into this category. And finally, dashboards like these are more comprehensive systems that integrate multiple aspects of work or life, offering a bird's eye view into various data points and tasks. While these types of templates offer the most holistic option, they require a lot from a person. It's important that these types of templates feel valuable enough that someone is willing to put in the work to move their life into your dashboard. But let's hear more about that from the community. I think. You have to work out what you're delivering with a template because in some ways you can overwhelm people too easily, I think. But I think if you get it right, you're either using them as a vehicle to share knowledge and understanding or perspective. So I think that's really exciting. I've made a journaling template where I've collected a load of prompts and useful ways of thinking. So actually the template is simple, but the, the content within it is the, is the value. Or you make a... 
a template that simplifies complicated tasks. And I think that's the real challenge with a good Notion template is how do you build power into it, but also make it simple and accessible to use. But you're not done once your template is built. There's another important phase that can make or break your template's success. The final step in the template creation process can be broadly described as testing or putting yourself in the shoes of your user. Everything we've covered so far will help attract people to your template. But there's a different set of factors to keep in mind when thinking about the long-term value of your template and what it'll deliver to those who actually put it in their workspace. Consider the following before you hit submit on your listing. First, the initial learning curve. For a new Notion user, a template like this can be quite overwhelming. You can have all of these cool different features and you might know how to use all of them. You might want to incorporate all of these formulas because you know how to build them. But when you're creating a template, you really have to consider who is going to be using it and you want them to feel empowered and great about using it so that it gives them confidence to keep using Notion. So really be um, aware of how you're designing it, making it as user friendly as possible as intuitive as possible, and also always accounting for that education component so they know how to implement it, use it, and customize it to their own individual needs as well. Ask yourself, how quickly can someone start using your template? Do you need to add instructional materials to help them understand where to add their own content and where to keep yours? Does your template have the right amount of fake data, or will someone have to go through a lot and delete it all before they can add their own? A few things you can do to help here include making two versions of the template, one with and one without dummy data, adding instructional elements like videos and callouts, or making a landing or getting started page if the template is on the more complex side. Second, think about scalability. If your content is meant for teams or long-term use, consider how it'll look with lots and lots of content added to it. Do you need to create more filtered database views to make it helpful or add toggles to hide some of the content? Testing your template with lots of content will help ensure it remains useful over time to those who duplicate it. Finally, make sure it has the basics. You probably don't want to share your actual banking information in your finance tracker. Double check your spelling and grammar and examples before you get ready to list. Once you're feeling good, it's time to turn your page into a shareable template. To make your page public, navigate to this menu and ensure that Allow Duplicate as Template is turned on. Save this link. You'll need it to list your template in the marketplace. You can share this link with anyone, but in order for it to be discovered in the Notion app, it must be listed on the marketplace. More on that in our next lesson. That's all for now. As you create your template, remember that the key to a great template is understanding your audience and solving their problems. Focusing on this and considering how someone might experience your template over time will help you get well on your way to creating templates that people love and truly find valuable. Happy creating, and we can't wait to see what amazing templates you bring to the Notion community. Mm -hmm.